Our paper deals with QSM application in multiple sclerosis. In our clinical patients, we found gadolinium-enhancing MS white matter lesions are iso-intense on QSM, while non-enhancing chronic active lesions are hyper-intense, typically having hyper-intense rims that are outside the lesion volume defined on T2-weighted imaging. We want to figure out how to interpret this QSM finding. Briefly, QSM is generated by processing gradient echo MRI phase and magnitude data, which both contain blooming artifacts, as well as the processed R2 star map. QSM removes these blooming artifacts by deconvolving the phase data under the guidance of the anatomic structure known from the T2 star weighted magnitude image. In order to understand what underlying pathophysiology causes the observed QSM signal, we performed correlation between microscopic pathology and macroscopic MRI that included T2-weighted imaging and QSM. The lesion volume on QSM is typically larger than that of the T2-weighted imaging. This hyperintense rim on QSM corresponds to iron measured using elemental analysis laser ablation ICP mass spectroscopy. Immunohistological staining using CD68 reveals that the iron is associated with M1 activated microglia macrophages, which are known to promote persistent smoldering inflammation after the blood-brain barrier seals. From QSM and ICP iron mapping, we can estimate the phospholipid fraction using a myelin susceptibility tensor model and TDI defined orientation for myelin. This phospholipid fraction map correlates well with histology using myelin basic protein staining. Lately, we found that it is very accurate to use QSM ISO intensity to identify gadolinium enhancing lesions and QSM hyperintensity to identify non-enhancing lesions in routine MRI monitoring of MS patients. Therefore, QSM can be used to identify MS lesion gadolinium enhancement status without gadolinium injection. In summary, clinical MS MRI protocols should include the gradient echo sequence, which will allow the generation of QSM to monitor the smoldering infect inflammation behind the sealed blood-brain barrier and to identify acute lesions with an open blood-brain barrier without the use of gadolinium.